Hi, this is Alcan. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, subject for tonight is guns. After the Jersey City uh, terrorist shooting and massacre from Bayonne all the way to Jersey City, the uh, question has to remain, are gun laws tough enough? Are we doing everything we can to keep guns out of the hands of the criminals and so on? You know what the answer is? No. Why? Because unfortunately... The criminals always find a way to get the guns. And no matter how tough your laws are or what you keep adding to them, you know, everybody thinks if you add 2 plus 2 equals 4, some people come out with 5. That's right. And recently, um, uh, days after the, uh, the terrorist shooting at Jersey City, uh, an employee of a pawn shop was arrested on... Separate gun charges. Apparently, he had a felony, and he got busted with 10 guns he's not supposed to have and 40 rounds of ammunition, which he also not supposed to have. But he has it anyway. So how is it that the the, uh, the suspects of the uh, Jersey City shooting had access to the, these guns anyway? Well, it seems that uh, his f female accomplice was able to buy guns in Ohio because, guess what? She has a clean record. He don't. He has a felony. He can't get no guns. But, so yes, they managed to get them anyway. So the thing is, you can put all the gun control laws you want, but the problem is criminals don't follow them. It's the people who have to buy the guns are the ones who are getting screwed. Just like, um... People at the airlines getting screwed because of the guy who wants to put a bomb in, in his shoes. Remember that guy? Did a lot of job, but guess what? Now everybody got to walk around barefoot in, in the airport, going to the the uh, going to the lines and the, the mouth detector because they don't trust us with shoes now. Oh, we might have bombs in their shoes. Well, this is a problem with. Um, with the gun control laws. The idea is to keep the guns out of the criminals' hands, but the problem is... You're punishing the citizenry. Exactly. The criminals still find a way to get around it. And the funny thing about this whole ordeal is, it's now Monday. Tomorrow's be the, anniversary, the first week anniversary of the incident, the terrorist shooting incident. And we not heard from the biggest gun control advocate of all, Michael Bloomberg. Why is this man silent and not saying anything? I mean, he, he's the one who pushed uh, Walmart to change their gun policies, uh, maybe because of, they had an incident at the El Paso store. Now, you can't, you can't walk around with a, with a, can see a weapon, and they catch you with a gun now, they want to ban you from all the Walmarts across the country, near the world. And it happened already to someone. So, the question has to be, are we doing everything we can to get the guns out of the criminals' hands, or are we actually screwing our own citizens doing this? I mean, yes, I'm a liberal and a Democrat, and you would think, I'll be jumping on the bandwagon for the um, gun control. Well, when the criminals start obeying gun control laws and pigs start flying, and I don't mean a blank in an in airplane, then I would believe it. But as I've seen it time and time again, it's not working. I mean, they were, they've been begging for gun control, gun control since Sandy Hook. Well, that that type of gun control that they're dreaming about is just a sad uh, fantasy. It's not coming. Because the only way you're going to control the guns from the criminals, you have to come up with a solution that all sides have to agree on. Not just the gun control advocates, but people who are pro-gun. You had to do it without violating the Second Amendment. You had to do it with the NRA's blessing. 
And without those two things, you're just a fish um, trying to survive out of the fishbowl. You know, you're running out of oxygen, but you don't want to jump back into the bowl. Um, that's a sad fact. I, I'm not a big on guns. I mean, I like watching, you know, the History Channel with the history of, of the guns. And the gun's always been claimed to be both a hero and a villain. Unfortunately, since last Saturday, the gun has been the villain. With the two suspects in the Jersey City uh, um, terrorist actions, they are now linked to the murder of the Uber driver at Bayonne, New Jersey, and the murder of a detective at the cemetery in New Jersey, City, New Jer Jersey City. I don't know why I said that. And of course, the injuries to civilians and the death of the three individuals in that kosher deli supermarket. It's just uh, one tragedy after another. If the solution has to come from both sides, not one side. You know, if you if you're trying to keep trying to push legislation and trying to smack it over the NRA, it's not going to get anywhere. You think you're doing achievements, but the reality is, no matter how much you do, the Congress on on the Republican side is not going to go for it unless everybody agrees to it. So let me get let me get let me know what you guys think about this subject, good or bad. Because we need to have a debate. We need to find the solutions that satisfy everybody, not just one side or the other, both sides. We don't need to be beating up each other and let this continue. I mean, I remember when when the NRA said armed guards in the schools, people thought they were nuts. But guess what? Today we have them. Even Sandy Hook has them. So, this is a, it's gonna be a long, long time in dealing with this situation. The thing is, I don't, don't like the idea of taking the guns out of somebody's hand. It's, the person has to be extremely dangerous to the point that, yes, he shouldn't have the gun. But you, you should not be punishing everybody else because of what somebody else did. That's like you're punishing uh, transit workers all across the country and around the world because a few bad apples were high and, and they crashed their trains killing people. Yes, you had drug testing now, but guess what? The drug testing in the U.S. is now going to cost these agencies even more money because now, because some governments have decriminalized uh, marijuana, they decided that a lot of these products are going to be legal. So what happens? Some folks think because it's legal in the state, that it's okay to use them, but it is not legal in the eyes of the federal government. So the problem is when it shows up positive, and the F FDA tests as federal, by the way, they're going to go by federal guidelines. So this is the same problem. Um, they already decided they're going to try to eliminate the bomb stock. That was that was using the um, Las Vegas shooting. Now, anything else? Like I said, that's gonna have to be between the gun advocates and the gun control advocates. They're gonna have to, to get together and come up with a solution that everybody can agree on. Because we're not interested in being up the people who support guns to to make us safer. 
Because after all, you, all the laws in the world is not going to help if somebody finds a way in a loophole to get around it and continue all these additional situations. So this is Alcan saying so long for now, and uh, don't forget to stop. Just let me know in the comments, and I'll try to answer your questions. All right, bye.